Hi, welcome to lesson one on low level programming. My name is Dr. Ritya Shajira. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the concept of a low level language, define the instruction format, distinguish between immediate mode and direct mode addressing, and finally, use the instruction format and addressing to trace a program written in machine language. At the beginning of the course, I told you that a computing system is a dynamic collection of hardware, software, and data, which is used to solve problems. Now I'd like to be a bit more specific and theoretical. A computer is actually a stored instruction electronic device that can store data, retrieve data from its storage, and process data. So what do we mean by a stored instruction device? Well, this simply means that there is a set of specific machine instructions which is completely integrated into a processor. As an example of this, recall that in the previous section, we built a circuit for subtracting two digits. All we have to do now is put our physical circuit for performing subtraction into a processor and create an instruction for it. We would then have a stored instruction for subtraction that is completely integrated to a processor. If we do this, then whenever we would like to perform subtraction, we need only call the instruction we created. Every processor has its own set of specific machine instructions, and these specific instructions perform low-level tasks, such as adding to numbers, subtracting to numbers, storing a number in memory, and loading a number from memory. These are just a few examples. As you might have already guessed, data, such as letters and numbers, and instructions to manipulate data, are logically the same. That is, they are both represented using binary values. And so we can store the data and the instructions to manipulate the data in the same place, in memory. This brings us to the concept of a low-level language. A low-level language is a programming language which provides little to no abstraction from the instructions of the processing unit. To put this into perspective, the instructions in machine language, which is a type of low-level language, is actually binary values that get put directly into the circuits of the processor as opposed to, say, in C++, where the high-level English-like statements such as while x is less than 4 or if x is greater than 5, first need to be translated into machine language to be put into the circuits of the processing unit. So what must an instruction actually do? Well, an instruction needs to indicate three things. Number one, what action should be done. Number two, what is being acted on. And number three, where must the action occur? Although you might not realize it, you use and hear instructions all the time. The statement, take the dishes to the kitchen, is an example of an instruction. Here, the action is to take, the object being acted on is the dishes, and the way of the action involves the kitchen. Let's try to be a bit more specific to a low-level instruction that can be executed by a processor. The statement, load a 4 into a register is an example of an instruction executed by a computer. Here we are asked to put a 4 into a register. If your register is made up of 6 bits, then we can simply put the binary value for 4 in the register. An instruction in machine language is made up of an instruction specifier, which tells us what the actual instruction is, and the operand specifier, which tells us what the value involved in the instruction is or where to find it in memory. The instruction specifier is further broken up into three parts. The first part is the operation code. This tells us what exactly the instruction to be executed is. The second part is the register specifier, which tells us which register is to be used by the instruction. And finally, the third part is the addressing mode specifier, which tells us how to interpret the operand specifier. You see, the operand specifier can either contain the actual value involved in the instruction or an address which can be used to find the actual value involved in the instruction. 
the addressing mode specifier can either be a 000 or 001. If the addressing mode specifier is 000, then it indicates immediate mode addressing. This tells us that the instruction involves the actual value indicated in the operand specifier. If the addressing mode specifier is 001, then it indicates direct mode addressing. This tells us that the actual value referred to by the instruction can be located at the address contained in the operand specifier. Another important component of the processing unit is the A register. The A register is one of several registers in the processing unit and is simply used to store binary value. I like to think of the A register as a table that you can do work on. Here is an example of a machine language program which adds two numbers together. At a first glance it looks pretty intimidating, but upon closer inspection we may be able to recognize the instruction format for each of the machine language instructions. I have numbered each instruction from 1 to 7 so that we can more clearly see them. Notice that each instruction contains the instruction specifier and the operand specifier. Let's try to execute this program. So let's consider the first instruction. In the first instruction, the instruction specifier has 11000000. The 1100 indicates the load operation. Load the operand into the A register. Well, are we loading the operand into the A register or are we loading the object in memory that is referenced by the operand into the A register? Well, looking at the addressing mode specifier 000, we know that what we want to load into the A register is exactly the operand. So we load the operand into the A register. In the next instruction, we have 0011, 0001. This means that we would want to input a decimal to the operand. Well, into the operand or into an address indicated by the operand. Well, we see the addressing mode specifier indicates direct mode addressing, which means that we're going to take an input from the user and put it at this memory location. We go to this memory location and we store the value given to us by the user. The third instruction is 0111. Looking at our opcode table, 0111 means we have to add the operand to the A register. Since we stored a 0 in the A register, we'll be adding 0 plus whatever the operand is. The instruction format says that we have to use direct mode addressing. This means that the operand is actually an address to the item that we want to add to the A register. So we simply go to that address, get the value at that address, and add it to the A register. So it'll be conceptually zero plus the item stored in memory. The next instruction is 0011. This indicates a decimal input to the operand. The type of addressing mode used here is 001, which is direct mode addressing. This means that we're going to take a value from the user and put it at this particular location in memory. The next instruction is 0111. Well, we've seen this before. We simply have to add the operand to the A register. So, because this is direct mode addressing, we know to go to this memory location, retrieve the value at this memory location, and add it to the A register. The next instruction, instruction 6, is 1110 using direct mode addressing. 1110 is to store the A register into the operand and we know the operand is an address because we are using direct mode addressing. So we simply take whatever's in the A register and store it at this memory location. 
and the final instruction 0011 indicates a decimal output from the operand. Because we are using direct mode addressing, we go to this memory address, retrieve the value, and output it to the user. To solidify your understanding of the concepts presented in this lesson, consider doing the following homework exercise. Here you are given various instructions to execute. Use this ASCII table to help you decode the instructions.